Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review Podcast and today we're going to be reviewing some of the key findings in valvular heart disease, high yield topic for the board exam. And let's start by reviewing mitral valve prolapse. Well mitral valve prolapse you want to look for a murmur that's pansystolic or it occurs only late in systole. Usually patients have a straight back pectus or scoliosis skeletal changes. Um, and there's also hyperreflexity of the joints, mainly due to an association with Marfan's or other systemic collagen abnormalities, such as Eva danlos syndrome. The floppy or myxomatous mitral valve um, are, uh, you know, usually present with a healthy young woman. Um, and what happens here is that you can hear a mid-systolic click, usually with no sequelae. Uh, but with significant mitral regurgitation which can develop occasionally due to the rupture of the chordae tendony. And the need for valve repair or replacement increases with age and the symptoms that patients present with uh, include you know, thin uh, skeletal deformities like pectus excavatum or scoliosis, uh, mid-systolic clicks as we mentioned. And what happens here is that you would order the echocardiogram and it's often associated with aortic root disease and any evidence of a dilated aorta by chest radiograph um, and again further follow up by a CT or an MRI is recommended and the treatment sometimes uh, includes beta blockers in low doses uh, to treat the hyperadrenergic state when the patient uh, initially presents and aspirin has been advocated in the past um, also, mitral valve repair is strongly favored over valve replacement. So on the boards, that's the key thing. Do you want to repair it or do you want to replace the valve? That's the key that you want to remember. You want to repair the valve. That's recommended. Um, mitral repair may include shortening of the chordae, chordae transfers or wedge resection. And um, mitral repair or replacement can be done through a, you know, a right mini thoracotomy or even robotic devices are used nowadays and keep in mind that um, you know periodic echocardiography is war warranted to assess for left ventricular size. Um, the other factors that you want to remember is that um, in patients with mitral valve prolapse um, the endocarditis prophylaxis is no longer recommended for most situations. Okay, so those are some of the key points for mitral valve prolapse. Now, um, let's review another topic, which is mitral stenosis. So what happens in mitral stenosis is that patients come in with exertional dyspnea, orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. So the key difference in physical exam that's different from uh, mitral valve prolapse. Often atrial fibrillation or pregnancy can cause this. Prominent uh, mitral first sound opening snap with an apical diastolic rumble is heard and an EKG will show left atrial abnormality and also commonly uh, the uh, atrial fibrillation. So associations here are key things. Also you want to remember that um, moderate mitral stenosis and pulmonary edema um, are form a syndrome and Severe mitral stenosis with pulmonary hypertension and low cardiac output are also commonly seen together. The other key thing is, as usual, the echo or Doppler is diagnostic, and the surgery indi is indicated for symptoms um, or evidence of pulmonary hypertension. And so, you know, here are some of the key things you want to remember is that patients with mitral stenosis present with an underlying, say, rheumatic heart disease. So you can have rheumatic fever um, causing the uh, thickening of the leaflets and also uh, the papillary muscles may be abnormally close together and sometimes so close that they merge into a single papillary muscle called the parachute mitral valve. Now mitral stenosis on chest radiography will show generalized cardiac enlargement okay and also the enlarged left atrium uh, indents near the esophagus that you can see and signs of pulmonary hypertension are seen. Also understand that um, the murmur is um, best heard at the apex 
with a patient in left lateral position. Those are some of the key high yield points that you'll want to remember for the board exam. And um, we mentioned that for treatment, surgical procedure is recommended. And, um, you know, indications for the intervention focus on the symptoms. Basically, if a patient has pulmonary hypertension, which is a peak pulmonary pressure greater than 50 mmHg, um, and also, some physicians think that atrial fibrillation is also an indication for a intervention. And understand, as we had mentioned, the repair is the key sign here. And um, other key things you want to remember is that the um, mitral prosthetic valves, they are prone to thrombosis, more so than the aortic valves. Um, and the by um, prosthetic valves can degenerate after 12 or 10 years and the percutaneous balloon valve opacity procedures cannot be done on bioprosthetic valves should there be additional stenosis so um, you know if you can do the repair that's much better than uh, trying to replace the whole valve you, re you refer patients um, when patients have excessive signs of pulmonary hypertension um, or a severe sign of um, you know rheumatic mitral stenosis on the echo